Um, please welcome one of the funniest comedians working today, Russ Maneev. <laughs> Good to be here. How are we doing, everybody? Good? Good moods? All right, good. I, uh, I was just visiting my family in Jersey, and uh, I had the most overprotective Italian mother. Anybody one of these? Anybody else forced to wear their winter jacket over their Halloween costume as a kid? <laughs> hey, Mom, I'm trying to be Frankenstein here, huh? I can't look too scary wearing a Winnie the Pooh ski jacket and snow pants, all right? But I was always afraid of Halloween and monsters and stuff like that. I always used to uh, j run and jump into bed because I thought there was a monster under my bed. He was going to grab my ankle and pull me down. So for like a month, my dad would walk me to the edge, and he would show me there was nothing underneath there. And it's little things like that you remember, because the first night that I did it by myself, he hid under there with a rubber monster hand and pulled me under. Yeah. I was in therapy for a long time after that. It was kind of sad. There's always one crazy uncle, too, right? This court house when I was a kid, he used to grab me by my wrists, beat me with my own hands, <laughs> would sarcastically ask me why I was hitting myself. <laughs> Here's the weird part. He's a really old guy now, so guess who gets to play the same game with him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> then I wrecked the family car when I was 17. Wrecked it. And I had to make that phone call at 2 in the morning to the angriest father. He's like, what the, who is this? <laughs> Hey, Dad, it's me, Russ. What the, what time is it? Well, it's 2 a.m., but I wanted to give you a head start for work. Because <laughs> you're going to be walking. <laughs> so now I live in the city, you know, and I don't have a, you know, I don't have a car anymore, so I take the subway all the time. And I'll tell you, I'm always in the worst situation rushing for the subway. There's always that guy in front of me that's taking his sweet time down the stairs because his train isn't there yet. Shouldn't you legally be allowed to push that guy on his stomach and ride him down like a sled onto your train? And there's so many crazy people down there, you don't really realize how easy it is to look insane. The slightest thing, you look nuts, right? Like, if you're walking down the street and you're eating a carrot, you look healthy, right? But if you're eating one of those big carrots with the big green bushy part hanging off the bottom, I don't know why, but you look insane, right? Or if you're eating a salad, you look healthy, try walking down the street eating a head of lettuce like an apple. See how you look then? And little things tip you off about people, right? Like if you're riding a bike, you look healthy too. But if you're riding a bike and smoking a cigarette, I know you're a broke loser with no car. <laughs> Speaking of losers, me, I just sit in my apartment all day and I, uh, I criticize television. You know, I was just watching a commercial just two days ago for the hair club for men. You ever see these commercials? You almost just want to get a hair transplant so you can start doing all that cool stuff the guy starts doing once he gets it, right? Like boating and kayaking and horseback riding and skiing. They make it seem like you can't do this if you don't have hair. This guy's sitting home, oh, hi, Bob, tennis? Well, what friggin' hair I can't play? I can't even play ping pong, that's how bald I am. Then I'm watching CNN, this drives me nuts too. You ever watch CNN? And there's always one senator or politician that has to put his own pronunciation on a name or a title. He's up there, he's like, our first thing is to find out about this, so Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Dude, you know how everybody's saying it. We don't need your personal pronunciation on it. If I was a reporter, I'd give it right back to him. Like, oh, bin Laden, right. And how do you feel about President G. Or, hey, Bosch's statement? <laughs> about A. Kunistin. How do you feel about that? i be like, what are you talking about, buddy? But the all-time worst was, uh, I'm watching the shark show, and uh, there's a shark expert idiot on the show. You know what this guy said? He said there were 79 unprovoked shark attacks last year. <laughs> Nobody has a problem with that statement at all? Unprovoked? Do we need that word in there? Are there people provoking shark attacks? Is there some loser from Jersey in the water? Hey, Shark, you freaking looking at me? You got a problem or something? I got something for you to bite right here. <laughs> Stop circling me. Face me, you wuss. But you know these animals would turn on us, right? Because we're eating them. Look at the lobster. He's the tastiest animal, and he has no line of defense. What's he have? This? This is it right here? Oh, look, I'm a big, scary lobster. I can't be stopped. Unless, of course, you have a rubber band on you. <laughs> you know you suck as an animal when you can be shut down with office supplies. Am I right? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.